Hey guys, David Tao with Barbend.com. At Barbend, we cover four main strength sports and a bunch of other ones, but a little less in depth. Weightlifting, powerlifting, CrossFit, and strongman. But there's a lot of confusion out there as to the differences and similarities between those sports. When you talk about a weightlifter, what are you referring to? Is that different than a powerlifter? We're gonna clear up some of those misconceptions today, and maybe most importantly, talk about what each of those sports isn't. First off, let's talk about what these sports aren't. None of them are bodybuilding. Now, bodybuilding is a pretty big term and that can refer to a lot of different subcategories. There's bodybuilding, there's weight class bodybuilding, there's figure, there's bikini. There are a lot of different subdomains under that bodybuilding umbrella, but none of the sports we're gonna talk about today have looking a particular way as their end goal. Now, there are weightlifters, powerlifters, CrossFit athletes, and strongman athletes who are big, have great muscular definition. They might look like bodybuilders to some people, but that's really just a byproduct of their training, not the end goal. Just wanted to clarify that for a second. All right, first up, we've got weightlifting. Weightlifting is just two lifts. It's the snatch, where an athlete takes a loaded barbell from ground overhead in one motion, and the clean and jerk, where an athlete takes a loaded barbell from ground to overhead in two motions, hence the clean and the jerk. Now, weightlifting is oftentimes referred to as Olympic weightlifting or just Olympic lifting because it's the strength sport that's tested in the Summer Olympics. So you see it on the international stage very prominently every four years. Well, as far as what makes a good weightlifter, it's really objective. It's just being able to snatch and clean and jerk the most possible weight at a given body weight and being able to do it on the competition stage, of course. So weightlifters are training the snatch and the clean and jerk, sometimes the clean and the jerk separately, a lot. That's what they're primarily focused on in training. Now, they're also doing a lot of, generally, front squats and back squats and some accessory movements to build overall strength. But weightlifting is really about just those two movements. Those are really the only things that matter on stage. Weightlifters really value speed because the faster you're able to do the snatch and the clean and jerk, generally the more weight you're able to lift. And also mobility because hitting those positions, especially in the snatch and the clean, can be very taxing on hip mobility, shoulder mobility, overhead. So weightlifters really focus on speed training and mobility training in addition to just being able to squat that weight up. All right, weightlifting competition is actually pretty simple. Men and women are competing against other men and women in similar body weight categories. An athlete has three attempts in the snatch and then three attempts in the clean and jerk and their heaviest snatch and their heaviest clean and jerk are added together. That gives them their total, which is how they're ranked against other athletes in those body weight categories. Now, whether a lift is made or not is a little more complicated than just standing up with the weight overhead. There are certain judging aspects like arms at full lockout, waiting for a down signal from the judges or referees. It gets a little bit complicated, especially at the international level. We'll discuss that in a future video, but those are just the basics. Weightlifting is also contested internationally every year at world championships, which occur every year there isn't a summer Olympic games and also annually at continental championships. For example, the United States competes in the Pan American Championships, and that's North and South America. You'll also see it at the local and national level. Internationally, weightlifting is governed by the International Weightlifting Federation, and at the national level in the United States, it's governed by USA Weightlifting, which is under the US Olympic Committee. And actually, Barbend is the official media partner of USA Weightlifting. Just to give a little plug, you'll hear us running color commentary at a lot of USA Weightlifting's national and, when they host them, international events. All right, that's weightlifting. What about powerlifting? They're completely different sports. They share some common ancestry, but they are different sports today. It's a personal pet peeve of mine when I hear people call something Olympic powerlifting. There is no such thing, at least not yet. Powerlifting is not yet an Olympic sport. People will say that, but they really mean weightlifting or Olympic weightlifting, just to clarify that. Much like weightlifting though, powerlifting has athletes competing in just a few movements. In powerlifting, it's the back squat, the bench press, and the deadlift. Your highest made back squat, your highest made bench press, and your highest made deadlift are added together, and that's your powerlifting total. So what makes a good powerlifter? Well, there are also a lot of different schools of thought here, and that has to do with different styles of training. In powerlifting, there are numerous. I won't get into all the specifics here. There's no clear winner in my mind on that. It really depends on the individual lifter. Obviously, strength, maximum back squats, maximum bench press, maximum deadlift. That's what a powerlifter is thinking, and that's the focus of their training. 
Now, speed training, mobility training, these also factor into powerlifting because you need to be able to safely hit the positions that will result in good lifts. For example, the back squat has to be at a certain depth depending on the federation you're competing in. If you don't have the mobility to hit that depth with a certain amount of weight on your back, you're not gonna get a good lift. All right, powerlifting competitions. In powerlifting competition, athletes have three attempts each at the back squat, the bench press, and the deadlift. Their highest made lift in each of those disciplines is added up, and that's their total. So they have nine attempts total over the course of a powerlifting competition. Men and women in particular body weight categories are competing against men and women in similar body weight categories, and athletes are ranked based on their totals. Another thing to keep in mind with powerlifting is that it's kind of like two sports in one. There are really two different versions that are contested. There's raw, sometimes called classic powerlifting, where athletes are limited in what kind of supportive gear they can wear. For example, some raw powerlifting federations allow knee wraps, some don't. And then there's equipped powerlifting, where athletes are allowed a lot more, including supportive bench shirts and squat suits. And different federations have different regulations in both raw and equipped powerlifting as far as what they allow lifters to use. For example, in equipped powerlifting, you have some federations that only allow something called single ply when it comes to squat suits and bench shirts. Some allow something called multiply. And so when an athlete is competing in powerlifting, they're gonna be competing against other raw powerlifters or other equipped powerlifters in those competitions. You're not really gonna see an athlete in the raw division go head to head with an athlete in the equipped division. Although some athletes do compete across those divisions in different competitions. So the biggest international powerlifting federation is the IPF, the International Powerlifting Federation. But like I said earlier, there are almost too many to count. That's at the local, regional, national, and international level. And they all have different rules and regulations. What you're allowed to compete in when it comes to raw powerlifting, equipped powerlifting, judging standards for things like squat depth, how you take the barbell out of the rack on the back squat. Uh, there are a ton of different variations, but if you're interested in competing in powerlifting and you're trying to find out more about different federations and their respective rules, just Google Barbend plus powerlifting or Barbend plus powerlifting federations, and we've got a lot more information on a lot of these federations and the options you have available. All right, CrossFit is a bit different because CrossFit is a company. It's a branded fitness regimen started by a coach named Greg Glassman. And just so I make sure I get this right, it's... Constantly varied functional movements executed at high intensity across broad time and modal domains. Whew, okay, I think I got that correct. When we talk about CrossFit as a strength sport, we're most likely referring to CrossFit Games style competition, or the CrossFit Games in particular, which developed after CrossFit was already an established fitness regimen. It's almost impossible to say what makes a really good CrossFit athlete. You have to be incredibly well-rounded. The answer at the end of the day is, be good at everything and you might have a chance. The fittest athletes in the world, the top CrossFit athletes in the world, have very few weaknesses. And a lot of them actually stack up well in maximal strength lifts against some weightlifters and powerlifters, even at the international level. Now, a top CrossFit athlete probably isn't gonna snatch and clean and jerk or back squat as much as the best weightlifter or powerlifter in their body weight category. But they might come close. So the CrossFit Games have evolved from a backyard throwdown at a dusty ranch in California to an international phenomenon. The CrossFit Open, which is the first stage of qualifying for the CrossFit Games, has literally hundreds of thousands of participants around the world every year. At the end of the day though, the CrossFit Games are all about finding the fittest men, women, and teams on earth. Athletes at the CrossFit Games undergo a broad battery of tests. Maximal lifts borrowed from other strength sports, classic CrossFit workouts, monostructural elements like running and swimming, a ton of tests and a ton of different workouts packed into what's normally a week long-ish event to at the end of the day determine who is the fittest across broad time and modal domains. It's really something to watch. Now, as far as who runs CrossFit competition, well, that gets a little complicated. CrossFit Inc. is the official licensing body for the name CrossFit, so official CrossFit competition has to be run or sanctioned by them. And the CrossFit Games have grown so fast and evolved so much over the past few years, it can be a little tough to keep track of. But if you want to learn more about what it actually takes to get to the CrossFit Games and the steps you need to take to qualify, just Google Barbin plus CrossFit Games. We've got some up-to-date breakdowns on exactly what that looks like. All right, here's a fun one. Strongman, sometimes referred to as strength athletics. What does that even mean? Well, strongman is a strength sport and it's testing strength and to an extent more general fitness. 
And it's using a lot of movements that we will see in, for example, powerlifting, the deadlift and the back squat. You'll see versions of those in many strongman competitions. But you'll also see athletes moving a lot of odd objects, often for time, loading heavy atlas stones, farmer's walks, lifting logs overhead. These are all hallmarks of strongman competition. If you've ever seen the World's Strongest Man or the Arnold Strongman Championships, things like that, that's a good example of strongman. There are a lot of different tests, there are a lot of implements and pieces of equipment you won't see anywhere else in the world, and there are a lot of very strong people lifting them very quickly. Training for strongman is similar to those other sports in that you have to have a great base level of strength, and oftentimes it does revolve around something similar to powerlifting training. It's a lot of heavy deadlifting and a lot of heavy squatting. But strongman training does require proficiency with these odd implements, everything from the atlas stone to lifting natural stones to the log lift. While every competition is a little bit different from what implements are used to how they're scored, strongman athletes tend to build proficiency and familiarity with a lot of these more common odd implements over time. When it comes to competitions in strongman, there are two that are definitely known best, the World's Strongest Man and the Arnold Strongman Classic. Both of these are most famous for the men's open bodyweight categories, where it's truly the largest, biggest, strongest strength athletes in the world, lifting incredible weight and really putting on a show that is more or less designed for broadcast TV. Now, Strongman is more than just these 400 pound behemoths lifting heavy logs and stones. Strongman competition, especially at the national, regional, and local level, has a lot of room for men and women competing in different bodyweight categories. In fact, most of the growth in strongman competition is at those lower bodyweight categories at the local and national level, especially over the past five to 10 years. And that's just scratching the surface of strongman competition. There are other divisions, implements, disciplines we didn't even get to discuss. For example, throwing heavyweight as far or as high as you can, yeah, you'll see that in strongman competition too. It's pretty cool. If you wanna stay up to date on the world of strongman, just Google barbend plus strongman, and we've got a ton of information on athletes from all different divisions around the world. And that's just a brief intro into the full world of strength sports. There are a ton of other sports and disciplines we didn't get to cover at all. Everything from kettlebell sport to Highland Games competition to competitive wood chopping, finger wrestling, moss wrestling, even wife carrying. Yeah, that's something people actually compete in and technically it's a strength sport. It's an interesting world and this is just meant to be a brief intro to the sports we at Barbend cover most often. If you'd like to learn more about any of these sports, just visit barbend.com and we have a ton of information on all of them. We also want to hear what you have to say and any questions you have on these sports in the comments below. For Barbend.com, I'm David Tao. Thanks for tuning in.